Conservative evangelical Christians are on the march in America. Flush with victories in recent elections, they enjoy more access to power than ever before. Now, plans are being made to extend that influence far into the future. Right now, you know, I'm going to intern at the White House, but anywhere I'll be content as long as I'm doing it to serve our country and to serve God. A new, well-connected college, a stone's throw from Washington, takes the brightest sons and daughters from the Christian heartland of America and prepares them for political warfare. Personnel is policy. If you get the right people there, you will change the way the nation works. In only five years, somebody works in the White House and uh, for, for Karl Rove's office. A number of them work on Capitol Hill, work for congressmen and senators. That's very exciting. Evangelicals hope this school will train the soldiers necessary to transform America and the world. Graduation day. Patrick Henry College is preparing to honor its graduating class. This row is crooked. Is that better? Does that pull it back right into it? The students at Patrick Henry are on a mission to mold America into their vision of a Christian republic. The reality is the vast majority of political and social leaders come from elite colleges. And so we believed it was time to create a parallel Christian institution that could rival Harvard and Princeton and Yale and Oxford. That's our, our unashamed goal. We are trying to recreate the Christian Ivy League here. And you know we're well on our way to uh, really train that top echelon of leaders. Every facet of the students' training prepares them to dominate the public arena. With each graduating class, the school inches closer to realizing its dream. Six years ago, Patrick Henry College did not exist, but Michael Farris, its founder and president, was a man with a plan. He had a vision to build a college that would train young Christians in the art of politics and instill in them the confidence and discipline to lead the world. He found powerful financial backers in evangelical political circles, and Patrick Henry College was born without a penny of debt an hour outside Washington, D.C. There's no ivy yet at Patrick Henry, but every other detail is designed to remind the students of the shoulders upon which they stand and to underscore the school's mission. God, our Father, we thank you so much for the young lives that stand before you this morning. Lord, I pray. We're uh, training people in an area that the evangelical community forgot about for a couple of generations, and that is political and cultural leaders. We don't train pastors, we don't train missionaries uh, on purpose. We are training them for another ministry, uh, which is every walk of life. You graduates, you are God's fields. And Patrick Henry College is not a church, but its mission is to serve the church by training up faithful men and women to serve Christ in this world, a mighty army a holy nation. This class of Patrick Henry graduates enters a world more ready than ever to receive them. The Republican Party is in control of every branch of the US government, based to a great extent on the strength of its organizing among conservative evangelical Christians. Now, Farris's connections in the capital are paying off. You've been interns at the White House more than any other college in America. You have won national championship in debate and move court. Personnel is policy. If you get the right people there, you will change the way the nation works. Mike's vision, I think, is highly charged politically. I mean, he's been a very influential man in conservative politics for a long, long time. And it's impossible for the college to not benefit from that. It's gone from 88 students in its first year to now over 300. Emily and Alianello. These graduates don't need a keynote speaker to give them direction. They know exactly what they are planning to do. Matthew Benjamin Dumay. 
Jesus said that we're a light to the world and salt of the earth. And if light is just contained in one place or salt is just kept in the shaker, then I don't see how it's doing any good to anyone. Naomi Mieko Harrelson. My hope is that the vision for the school would be accomplished through each individual life. Patrick Henry graduates finish their senior year determined to fulfill their mission, to work the levers of power to re-Christianize America. Most of Patrick Henry's students are a product of the homeschooling movement. They were taught at home, kept apart from the cultural mainstream. Many homeschool families come from born-again churches, like this one in Baberton, Ohio. In two weeks, it is sending Derek Archer off to his freshman year at Patrick Henry. My dad's the pastor and we absolutely love it. It's where God wants us. And today we are doing our annual uh, church cleanup. Just going around doing some maintenance work and um, keeping the place looking good. Evangelical Christian parents choose to homeschool their children in order to control every element of their environment. They want to shield them from what they see as the moral decay of the world and instill a strong Christian worldview. I've been homeschooled from first grade to twelfth grade and uh, I've never been really in the classroom setting apart from driver's education. <laughs> um, so it's going to be a big change. Yeah, I see him as a leader. Uh, we don't know exactly what area, if he will get into politics, be a politician himself, or be a support for a, a, a network. We're really excited to see what the Lord has for him down, down the road. So all kinds of avenues, Patrick Henry College, that he could go and get into. It's going to be interesting to see which one the Lord directs him into. Since his family moved to Baberton four years ago, Derek has helped them to pay the bills by working at a local butcher shop. He's like every parent's dream. <laughs> he really does, you know, because he would get up in the morning and he would study. And he would study up to the time that he came to work and then he would leave and he would go study some more. It's not uncommon for him to discuss the uh, discuss Bible while he's working. It's just not uncommon. It, you know, it just, we just accept it as you know, part of his, you know, his uh, lifestyle. God gives grace and uh, it's just, that's what life's all about for me. Christ and his work upon the cross to save a sinner like myself. I, I know here in America especially, we seem to be drunk with the wine of uh, okay. prosperity. And um, there's that verse in the Bible that says, if a man gains the whole world and yet loses his own soul, what does it profit him? If there's one thing I hope to be remembered by when I'm gone, it's that um, Christ was my portion. He was my all.